hello guys welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new i know this is like kind of a random place to be filming a video right now i am currently sitting at my kitchen island and today we're going to be doing a q a and i wanted to sit here to do it because every time i have friends over at my apartment this has become our thing like this has been our hangout spot we sit at the kitchen island we have our drinks and we just talk and we play music i have my little bluetooth speaker over here so i thought why not film this video here so that it really feels like you're just here hanging out with me you know i made myself an iced chai latte this is the tazo or tezo i don't know classic chai latte just poured that over some ice with a splash of milk just like the starbucks chai latte cheers grab yourself a drink or a snack i asked you guys on instagram if you had any questions that you wanted me to answer and we got some good ones the first question have been single four years have no interest in dating is that weird i don't think so at all and actually i really admire people that are single for like long periods of time and are just totally content being by themselves because i really have only been single as an adult for like a year there was one year between my two serious long-term relationships where i was single and that was it so no i don't think that it's weird just enjoy your time do your thing why force yourself to do something that you don't want to do who says that you have to date or that you have to be in a relationship if you're content being on your own have at it any advice on starting a podcast my husband and i are starting a podcast soon oh congrats my best friend and i actually just started a podcast almost two months ago now um, i'll have a link to it in the description if you want to check it out off the top of my head first thing i would say is don't put too much pressure on yourself to make it perfect right away as someone who's been doing youtube for years and social media and all that stuff like i am totally comfortable talking in front of a camera does not bother me does not make me nervous at all but for some reason recording our first podcast episode i felt really awkward and kind of nervous and i do it with my best friend and she like does not do social media at all this is all like completely new to her by the way i didn't realize you can see my sweatpants my outfit does not match at all right now so don't mind that i feel like our first episode we were like maybe a little bit more awkward and the conversation didn't flow as like naturally it took like a couple of episodes for us and i feel like as we are getting more used to this and more comfortable like it's just sounding better and better and we're more natural so yeah don't expect it to be super perfect and sound super professional the very first episode like you will get more comfortable and learn more and it will just sound better and better as time goes on and you get more experience do you smoke weed all of my friends do and i do not i've always felt left out i can relate to that um i remember in high school m most of my friends yeah like pretty much all of them smoked and or like you know would get together and like at parties they would smoke and i was like really against it back then i don't really know why but wasn't into it like did not want to do it at all and i definitely felt left out now i will smoke like on occasion but it's really rare that i do um and i only like i don't have it on me myself like the only time i ever do it is if i'm with friends and they're smoking if you're not into it and it's not something you're interested in like that's totally fine you don't have to feel weird about it honestly you're saving yourself money by not smoking so think of it that way <laughs> what's your favorite part about your newfound independence i feel like i have full say and full control over my life in every aspect i don't have to answer to anybody i don't have to like ask anybody's approval i don't have to compromise on anything which can be a good or a bad thing i guess but yeah i love it and especially like being in my own space being able to decorate however i want um keeping it as clean as i want even like small things like not having to argue over like what movie we're gonna watch or something like that you know how you overcame social anxiety i moved abroad and my anxiety's only gotten worse oh i can relate to that so much even though 
I feel like when I say that or when I tell people that I'm naturally introverted, they do not believe me. I am. I'm an introvert. I can be very shy. I get social anxiety sometimes. I, it used to be a lot worse than it is now. I think what helped me honestly was doing hair and working in a salon. It forced me to kind of put that mask on almost and pretend to be like the super outgoing, talkative person. And eventually, it's like you when they say fake it till you make it, it's like, or fake it till you become it, kind of. And I feel like that's what has worked for me in like every aspect of life. If there's ever something that I feel scared to do or I don't feel like I can do it, I just force myself to fake it in a way and like I convince myself that no you are that person you can do that you are gonna do that and then eventually you just kind of believe it and I feel like that's helped me even just like with my confidence too eventually you just start to believe it and it just kind of becomes like a self-fulfilling prophecy if, if I'm having a day where I feel really anxious and like scared to leave my apartment I will be like okay Go get dressed, get yourself ready. And putting on an outfit that like you feel really comfortable in too, that you feel like cute in, that helps me. Um, and then I just force myself like, okay, just go. And then once I'm out, I feel like the anxiety kind of like melts away. It's usually like, it usually builds up a lot in my head while I'm home. I used to have really bad driving anxiety. Honestly, even just like going five minutes away to the grocery store used to like freak me out. Um, and getting on the highway, forget about it. I would avoid it by all means possible. And when I went to cosmetology school, the school that I chose to go to was an hour away and I had to take the highway to get there. And I was terrified, but I forced myself and I lied to myself in my brain and I said, no, you can do this. You're not scared to drive. You're a badass, you got this. Put on music that I love. Over time, by forcing myself to do that, I overcame the driving anxiety completely and now I love to drive and now I'm not scared to go anywhere. I will drive anywhere, it's a brand new place I've never been before, I don't care, like, yeah, I don't know. That's what, what has worked for me. Do you plan to travel anywhere? So actually my friend that I did the podcast with is in Italy right now as we speak and I'm very jealous and kicking myself because she invited me to this trip. But as of right now, no plans. What's the best part about moving and starting a new journey in life? That question's actually from one of my best friends, Paige. Hey girl. I love the fact that like when I came down here, nobody knew me. So I really could just like be whoever I wanted. I didn't have to like carry any kind of baggage with me. I highly recommend anyone out there, if you have the opportunity and the means to move, to a new place and kind of like get a fresh start, highly recommend. How do you like living in North Carolina? I really love it here so far. I mean, I've only been here um, barely, it hasn't even been four months yet. So it's a little bit too soon to say. I know a lot of people have been asking me even in real life, like, oh, do you think you're gonna stay down there long term? I honestly don't know. I feel like it's too soon to say, but as of right now, I do really like it here a lot. The weather is perfect. Especially where I am, I'm in Wilmington, so I'm like very south in North Carolina, like south in, in the state, and I'm right at the beach, which is amazing, and the weather here is like perfect because it's very mild, like we still get winter, it's not like just super hot year round, we still have winter, but it never gets to be freezing cold. It's been very good for my seasonal depression so far, and the people here all have been very nice. And I just feel like my way of living here is just like way more relaxed. Any tips on transitioning from assistant to full-time stylist? I'm so shy. Kind of like what I said before, fake it until it becomes your reality. When you first start out as a stylist, you're going to have mess ups. That's just, it's just the reality. Like, and you're going to be slower. You're going to make mistakes, but don't let that discourage you and hold you back. Like if you know, okay, I'm just getting started. Everyone goes through this period where they're learning and they're making their mistakes. As long as I keep at it and I keep practicing with time and experience, I will get better. I think that will like help take a lot of pressure off of yourself. And don't be afraid to like ask your fellow stylists for help and for advice and watch what they do. How do they interact with their clients? What do they normally do? How do they do their consultations? What is something you hate about online dating? 
oh my god pretty much the whole thing <laughs> i've gone on a few dates that with people that i've met through like the dating apps um and they were all fine like luckily knock on wood i've never had any like terrible experiences but i really was just doing it like because i was bored and for fun i think me and julia are gonna do an episode on our podcast about this and talk about it in more detail so make sure you're following our podcast i don't know a lot of it is just very superficial and i don't like the fact that there are just so many options because i feel like people don't take enough time nowadays to really get to know one person they're just so quick to be like eh i don't know there's like this one little thing about you that i don't really like or that isn't perfect so I'm just going to keep swiping and then find somebody else, you know, or like they'll be juggling multiple people at one time. And it's like, how can you really get to know all of these people that well at once? You know, like, I don't know. That's probably like the main thing that I hate about it. Has your ex been supportive of your move and new opportunities? Yes, he has. He is so amazing and like yes we have our issues obviously if we didn't we'd still be together <laughs> but he is such a good person at the end of the day and i know that he has so much love for me and i him and we will always be supportive of each other no matter what what other youtubers do you recommend oh my god i love kendall ray she will probably always be like my all-time favorite i just love her personality i feel like we would be such good friends and i also love stephanie harlow i love that woman and i respect her so much because she is such a hard worker like the amount of detail and research that she puts into every case that she shares is just so admirable she's amazing next accomplishment in your life that you are working towards honestly at this exact moment I mean, yes, I think that it's always good to like set some kind of goals for yourself and have something that you're working towards just like in general. But at this exact moment, I am trying to just kind of chill because I feel like my whole life I've constantly been like chasing after something and constantly like had my like eye on the prize and focus on like the next thing that I wanted to achieve. It's just like I've been constantly hustling like my entire adult life. As of right now, I don't have anything specific in mind that I'm actively working towards. Um, I just wanna be happy, like good mental health, good physical health and just like, just happy. Best advice with dealing with a breakup. Oof. It depends. I used to always say you have to cut that shit off and not have any more communication. And with my first breakup, that's what I did. That's what helped. But this time around, we talk all the time and it's been helping me to stay in contact with him this time. So I, I, I do feel like it varies and it depends on how your relationship was when you were together and how the actual breakup like went down and why you're breaking up and how mature both of you are but generally speaking finding something to distract yourself whether that's like working out or just like a new project or some kind of like creative thing that you can do just something that will keep your mind busy so that you're not thinking about the breakup um and keeping your friends close by friends family whoever you feel comfortable opening up to talk to them like if you are ever feeling really sad don't be afraid to reach out that's something i have such a hard time doing but i'm i'm trying to get better reaching out and asking for help or like just asking your friends to listen to you vent and even if it's like the same shit that they've heard a million times if they're like your true friends who really care about you they will just be there to listen and just giving yourself time allowing yourself the time to be sad to be heartbroken it's never going to be easy. There, there's nothing that you can do that's going to just help you like move on overnight. You know, like it's going to take time. There's going to be days where you start to feel a lot better and then the next day you feel like shit again. So just know that like time will heal everything. Eventually you will move on and it will be completely in the past and you'll feel fine. It's just all part of the healing process. Oh, speaking of which, how did you know you did not have feelings for your ex anymore? No more sexual chemistry. <laughs> no, unfortunately the sexual chemistry never went away and that made things difficult. And it's not even that like I stopped having feelings 
per se for us like our situation specifically it was really just like a logical thing it was like okay we both know that we're not happy we're not bringing out the best in each other right now this isn't really healthy this isn't working out neither of us are feeling our best so we need to do something about it and probably like having some distance between each other and taking some time is probably what's best and whether that means like breaking up permanently and never being together again or you know it, like who knows i always say like if things are meant to work out they will i don't know but like I'm not holding my breath one way or the other, I should say. But yeah, I mean, it was never like, oh, I just don't have feelings for him anymore. It was just kind of like knowing mentally, okay, something needs to be done here. And I, I do think that that takes a lot of emotional maturity to be able to admit that. What podcasts are you currently listening to? The main one that I've been listening to the most regularly is Crime Weekly, Stephanie Harlow's podcast with Derek Vavassar. I love both of them so much i also love crime junkie that's another one of my favorites i recently started listening to anatomy of a murder is that what it is anatomy of murder i also listen to the mile higher podcast kendall ray's podcast i think those are about it so yeah clearly i'm very into true crime oh my god i love these love is blind questions who do you think you would have fallen for if you were on love is blind season two if anyone at all would you ever be able to do love is blind or do looks really matter i say looks matter and then someone else said i love this one can i put you on my shoulders at a festival so if you haven't watched love is blind season two it's so stupid but so good i recommend you should watch it the whole premise of the show is like these people meet in these pods there's just like a wall between them and they can hear each other and they can talk but they cannot see each other until they pick the person that they want to be engaged to so they propose to each other in the pods and then from there they are officially engaged then they meet and see each other in person and then they get to spend I think it's like three weeks together in person and then they decide at their wedding if they want to actually go through with it and get married or go their separate ways. So the one guy in season two, like the whole point is you're not supposed to know what these people look like physically, like at all, like no idea, even like generally what they look like. And he just kept asking all the women like, oh, so do you like working out? Would you say that you work out regularly? Oh, I love going to festivals and putting girls on my shoulders. Would I be able to put you on my shoulders or like would I have a hard time like lifting you up on my shoulders like shit like that like to try to see like are they thin or not basically would I be able to go on love is blind no because for me I I think like if you really truly got to know somebody like super super well on like a very deep emotional level would I be able to look past their looks to a certain extent if I really 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 found them like super super unattractive and like they had bad hygiene and like you know like they were just gross then no but even if they were like someone that I didn't I wouldn't typically go for physically maybe yes however that show moves way too quickly for me I think that's why my relationships always end up being so damn long before I realize like okay this isn't working out because I don't know I think I'm just like really closed off and I'm so I don't I, I don't know but it, it takes me a long time to really like fully open up to somebody and like really truly be like deeply in love and feel that connection with somebody so no i could not go on that show and who do i think i would have fallen for probably none of them honestly but if anything maybe kyle he seemed like he had traits that i would be more attracted to than the other guys what's the hardest thing about being an influencer there are way more pros than there are cons let's be honest right like this is a pretty good gig so by no means am i complaining ever but i would say the worst part about it is the online hate that you can get and not even so much the hate but like the judgmental comments the unsolicited advice the nitpicky comments things like that and I think sometimes people will forget that you're an actual real person and that you have a life outside of like the videos that they're watching because you have to understand that like the videos that I'm posting you're seeing like 
maybe 30 minutes out of my entire week. Out of seven full days, you're getting 30 minutes that have been edited down. I'm not including everything. There's a lot of things that go on behind the scenes that I don't include, that I don't talk about. Writing a paper on love languages and curious to know what yours is. Love you. Oh, thank you. Highly recommend if you do not know what your love language is, Google love language quiz, take it really quick, find out what your love language is because I think it's so important to know not only yours but also your partners and like your friends it's just basically the way that you show love to people the way that you show that you care about people and the way that you need people to show that they care and love about you mine is physical touch so when i am really into somebody like i get very touchy with them like constantly have my hand on their leg play with their hair kiss them a lot does it bother you that your exes are able to see your current life no, it does not bother me at all. Um, I'm on really good terms with my exes. And I really don't think that any of them are even watching my videos anyway. Like, I don't think that they care. And if they do, it doesn't bother me. I don't know. Struggling with career path slash if I'm truly in it for the right reasons, how do you deal with it? The biggest thing that has helped me is just realizing that you don't have to just pick one career that you are then going to stick with for the rest of your life. You also, and um, my friend Julie and I had this conversation in one of our recent podcast episodes, and I never even thought about this until she said it. You don't always have to be 100% passionate about what you're doing for your career. And I, like, I never even, that just never occurred to me before because I feel like everybody always says like, oh, if you love what you do, you never will work a day in your life. But she was saying that for her, she doesn't really have any like strong passions. She's content with just like having a regular routine and getting up and having that stability of like get up, go to work, be done by this hour, come home, knowing that she's, you know, making a certain amount of money for the year. Whereas for me, I don't like that kind of strict routine. I get super bored and I feel like I always have to be doing like multiple things at once. I'd rather have like multiple revenue streams and like just be doing a bunch of like different passion projects. It just depends. It depends what kind of person you are. You don't have to be in love with what you're doing as long as you are content enough to get up in the morning and go and do it and you're not miserable, you know? Um, and remind yourself that like I said, you don't have to stick to one thing for the rest of your life. You can do whatever it is that you're doing now while you're enjoying it. And then if you go to a point where you're not really feeling it anymore, then look for the next thing. And I know sometimes that can be easier said than done, especially if you have a family and, you know, bigger financial responsibilities and stuff. But don't rush yourself. I feel like we live in the society where we're raised to believe that, you know, you graduate high school you go to college or you go to a trade school you get a job and then you just work for the rest of your life until you retire you get married you have kids da, 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 da. like all these things have to happen in a certain order and within like a certain time frame the older that i get i'm realizing like that's bullshit <laughs> like who made those rules you know like it doesn't have to be that way do you regret your first long-term relationship no i don't regret anything in my life even if there's certain things that i'll look back at and think oh you know like i wonder how things would have been different if i did like x y and z instead but i'm content with how my life is now and i know that if anything went differently there's a good chance i wouldn't be right where i am at this moment and that kind of freaks me out so no i have no regrets there's no point in regretting anything it is what it is it already happened it's in the past and i feel like everything that we go through Every experience we have, we learn lessons from that, whether you realize it at the time or not. Advice you would give your younger self. I guess kind of just what I said, like don't overthink things, like whatever is meant to happen will happen. Just do what feels right. Listen to your gut and everything will work out the way it's supposed to. Thinking of getting a second pet no not anytime soon just because the apartment that i live in right now is pretty small if i did get a second pet it would be another dog i i would want more space because um, i like bigger dogs too that's the thing so i would want a bigger space and like a backyard where they could run around i don't have that where i'm 
am at this moment and I do really like this apartment I think I want to stay here for a while so until I'm in a bigger space no unfortunately I wasn't able to get through all of the questions but my camera keeps like cutting me off and telling me that I've exceeded the recording limit so I think I'm just gonna wrap it up here thank you guys so so much for your questions if you enjoyed this and you want me to do another Q&A in the near future let me know I would be happy to do that I love these videos like just sitting and chilling like I said it really just feels like I I have friends over hanging out with me so yeah thank you guys so much for watching I will see you very soon in my next video bye